Hey, what's up? I'm Jason, and I've been building games for a really long time now, but while I've built quite a few different games, I've prototyped way more than I've ever built, and I think that's the case for all of us game developers. We want to prototype things out, figure out what's fun before we spend our time building it. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top tips for how to prototype efficiently, how to get a prototype started, built, and running really, really fast without wasting time and without ruining your project or making a mess of it. Now, before we get started, I wanted to say that that if you have any prototyping tips that I don't share along the way or you can think of something, um, drop it in a comment below because I'm always interested in learning new ways to get better at this and I think that everybody else is as well. Also, if you just have an idea and you want to see if I'm going to put it in there, drop it in the comment, watch the video, and we'll see if uh, my ideas match up with yours. Anyway, let's get started. Well, actually, before we get started, hit that like button, please, if you don't mind. Really appreciate it. It helps a lot, gets the videos out there, and it makes it so that people will prototype better and hopefully Hopefully write better code. All right, tip number one, and this is, I think, the most important tip. Don't plan on keeping the code. Whatever stuff you write for a prototype should be thought of as throwaway code. Now, you might end up writing something really cool and really interesting that you want to keep, and there's nothing that says that you can't keep a little chunk of your code, but don't think about your prototype as a project that you're going to morph into a real project. A lot of people do it, a lot of the time it happens, and a lot of the time it's kind of management driven. You'll write some code, you'll put together this little prototype and they'll go, okay, well now let's make this into a game. Just convert that one little thing over and then suddenly it's a working game. It's not the way that it works. Make sure that when you're building your prototype that you're thinking, this is something I am going to throw away. I'm, and it's not that you're just gonna throw it away and get rid of it. It's that you're gonna throw away the project and restart it. And the reason for this isn't, um, isn't very obvious, I guess, because people think that, oh, well, I'm saving time if I make this code good and I make it reusable so that I can continue on with it and I, I don't have to restart this whole thing. But the idea of not keeping the code is that we're gonna throw this entire project away and we already know exactly what to build. We know what things worked, what things didn't work, and the way that things should be because we've answered those questions in our prototyping process. So we should be able to take whatever we built in our prototype and rebuild that entire thing in under a day. If it takes more than a day to rebuild that entire thing, we've probably been prototyping for way too long and it's gone, gone way overboard and it's no longer a prototype. So just think about it this way. Write your code in a way that it's it's going to be good enough, and we're going to talk a lot more about code, that it's good enough that you can understand it, it's not going to break, but don't overthink it, and don't overthink your project structure or pulling in assets or anything else. Just grab things, play with it, and plan on throwing it all away and starting over, just using that base as a, or that, or that old version of your prototype as a basis and a reference point where you can go in, take little chunks of code, and take the bigger idea and bits of functionality out of there. You're gonna have to rebuild prefabs, you're gonna have to rebuild scripts. It shouldn't be a big deal. You should be relatively quick at it by this time because again, you know exactly what you're building. You're just following some steps. This brings me to tip number two, which is that you should really write your functionality into small little components. And by components, I actually mean small mono behavior components. Just go find your game object, add a script, you know, type in the new name of the script or put it in the right folder if you want, and then start implementing it. Put things directly into mono behaviors, directly on the game object that you want them to work with. Again, this is a prototype. You don't really want to spend time overthinking it or over-engineering it. Don't worry about should this be a mono behavior or should this not be a mono behavior because when you're done with it, you'll know. When you're done with the prototype, you'll know, okay, this didn't really need to be a mono behavior, so now that I'm deleting all this code and starting over, I know that when I recreate it, I'll just recreate it as not a mono behavior. But I'm not gonna spend the time trying to figure that out and think it through while I'm prototyping because I really don't know what this script is gonna be. It could be anything from like a simple jump script that's doing a, a jump mechanic and maybe I want the guy to jump, maybe I don't know if I want him to jump, maybe I'm not sure how jumping is gonna work. So I'll just add a simple jump Jump script. I'm not going to go add a player script that does all kinds of other things. It's going to be a single little jump script that handles that on top of some other movement script. If it's an attack, it's going to be a simple little attack script or a weapon script or whatever it is. Or just make a separate script for everything. Make small little components. Don't build up 
a big thing. And the reason for that is that we want to be able to adjust and change the functionality really fast when we're prototyping. Usually prototyping means we're guessing at what we think might be fun and we're going to want to turn things off. We're going to want to toggle things. We're going to want to change little bits of functionality and we're not going to want to have to um, go in and change a big player class or a big uh, character class that does 10 different things and is easy to break. We just want to add components, remove components and keep it nice and simple. And again, when we're prototyping, we don't even need the entire thing to be functional. I think this is an important point to point out. Right? Most of the time when we're prototyping, we don't need all of the game to be functional. We don't need all of the functionality working at the same time. We're trying out different bits of functionality, seeing what feels good and what feels right, and then we're going to combine it later. So even if one of our scripts doesn't necessarily work right with another one and we have to turn them on and off to try out those two different behaviors, it's not a big deal in a prototype. There's no point in making them work together and making them work right on something that we're going to throw away tomorrow or next week. The next tip is actually an answer to a question, which is, should I use unit tests or TDD or test-driven development when I'm prototyping? And this one's a little bit of a tricky one because it's kind of a, a mixed one. So first off, if you've never done any unit testing before, the answer is no. Don't just try to dive into unit testing with prototyping and think that it's going to make your prototyping easier. First, you need to learn how to unit test if, if you're going to do that. For TDD, I would say definitely not. Don't use test-driven development for a prototype because that's the type of behavior that you want to use when you're writing code that you're going to keep around for a long time. Test-driven development is a practice for writing code that gives us stability and lets us know that the thing works a year later, that when we make a change, our code didn't break. In this case, that's not what we're doing. We want to break things. We want to throw stuff away. No TDD at all. Now, what about unit tests? Do you ever do unit testing? Now, I, I really the main reason that I wanted to add this whole tip and section is that I would have said no a while ago. Maybe a year ago, I probably would have said, like, when I'm prototyping, I don't ever write unit tests. But I realized recently that that changed a little bit. And I don't write unit tests overall for prototypes. I don't just go out and think, like, okay, I'm going to write some tests or TDD it. But what I do find myself doing is if I get stuck on a problem, if I find some code that just broke, and I'm like, ah, how did I break this thing in the prototype? I don't remember what I did, why I broke that. I'll consider writing a test for it. If I break it twice, I will definitely write a test for it. Or if I'm just not sure why something isn't working, I find that I will just write a quick little unit test for it and it'll usually expose the issue and it'll keep me from breaking the thing in, in the future. Again, if you're not familiar with unit testing, don't worry, you can kind of skip past this part and just go on to the next part, which I think is one of the more important tips. The next tip is on code cleanliness, solid principles, and refactoring. What do you do there? How clean should this code be? How much should you work on making it right? Well, I would say that it doesn't necessarily need to be extremely clean, but I do find that when you're prototyping, if you're refactoring things constantly and naming things as their behavior changes, it's a whole lot easier to finish your prototype fast and to convert it later because you'll make a lot of decisions when you're prototyping kind of on the fly, just snap decisions, and you won't really remember why you made that decision. And if you forget to rename your things and update your method names, your variables, it can become a real pain and a real mess to figure out what it was you were doing there. And then recreating it can just be a little bit problematic and you might run into bugs and just waste time. So I'd recommend renaming things relatively constantly and also just cleaning things up as you go. If you find that you created a class you thought you were going to use, you don't want to use it, delete it. You find you made some methods and then you changed it like, ah, these don't belong here anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. Delete that stuff out. Don't leave the old things in your prototype because it will just confuse you. And you might think like, hey, what if I want to go back to that old thing? Then then use source control. If you're, if you're not sure and you think you might want to go back, you can use source control and go back to it. But the prototype thing should be so fast that you could just re-knock it out in a couple minutes anyway and rebuild it. So Get this stuff clean. Don't leave a mess in your prototype. Now let's talk about art. Art in prototypes is actually a lot more important than you might think. It's easy to think, hey, I could just use a gray box and some capsules, and I've done that before. And it works great for basic functionality. If I want to know if my script works and does the thing, can it move this guy around this box or whatever. But when you want to 
prototype out actual fun, you need some of that flashiness. You need some of the theme and some of the characters. So I like to pull in actual character models and usually example scenes from packages off the asset store. I usually just browse there, grab something free, or I also have a BitGem Unlimited account, so I'll go grab one of their environments or pull in some of their characters. I really love some of their stuff, so highly recommend it. Um, not sponsored or anything, just highly recommend their stuff. Uh, another great site for getting this kind of stuff though and getting it freely is Open Game Art. I love that site and I use it all the time, especially for 2D stuff, but they have a lot of good 3D things as well. And I also wanted to say that if you have any recommendations for places where people can get art, either free or paid stuff that's reasonably priced, um, drop it in a comment below, because I'm always looking for new stuff. Open Game Art just came as a recommendation from somebody who happened to watch one of my things. So if you have something, I'd love to hear it. Just share it down there and I'm sure all of us would like to know. Even if it's not free, it's got some deal and it's, it's reasonable for developers like us, then hey, please share it. All right, let's jump on to starter kits because when we talk about paying to start with things, uh, starter kits kind of the next transition or the next logical thing. And I've used starter kits a couple times when I was prototyping out games. Starter kits, if you're not familiar with them, are these little packages that you can get usually on the Unity Asset Store that give you a semi-complete game. It's usually not a complete game, it's the start of the game. That's why it's called the starter kit. And so you might have the core functionality of a strategy game with two units on each team. So you can kind of get the idea of how to build out the rest of the game and fill out the game and make your own customization. Or you might get a starter kit for a first person shooter that's got a dozen weapons in it and a level and like one or two bad guys that you can go around and shoot. And then you can use that to prototype out your interesting different functionality. You're like, hey, I want to build a first person shooter where you run on walls or you fight these big giant monsters that you climb on. You could definitely grab one of those starter kits and use it either as a basis for building out your prototype or as a um, reference point to pull things from. I've done that before where I take a starter kit and I start my own project, but I just kind of pull in the little bits of cool stuff that they have. A lot of the time it's art assets, characters, animations, and then a little bit of scripts here and there where they've done something that I need to do and hey, it already works, it works great, I'm gonna just use their script. So there are two different ways to use them. I would recommend trying both. Usually the starter kits aren't very expensive. They're in you know, the 20 to $40 range, which is really cheap compared to one day of a developer time, which is, it's going to take you way more than a day of developer time to build out a starter kit. So I recommend grabbing one or two when you're prototyping out and just get an idea of how people built things and um, use those assets. And then you can reuse those assets and reuse those starter kits later. So what environment should you prototype for? If you're building a new game, you're not sure what it's going to be. Should you build a Windows build, a web build, a mobile build, a VR build? It really depends. I would say 95% of, of the time, you should probably just go with a Windows or Mac build, whatever it is that you're developing on. There's usually very little value in porting the thing over to the actual platform that it needs to be on. Now with augmented reality, that's less the case. You might want to put it onto the device, but you can still kind of get away with it without. So you, actually, I guess even with augmented reality, I probably wouldn't recommend going directly to the device. I think the only one I really would is with virtual reality. If you're doing a VR game and you're prototyping it, you really need to see what it feels like, move your hands around and turn your head around and all that. Outside of that though, I would stick with whatever you're developing on. So that way you're not wasting time thinking about device specific issues, performance issues, or deployment, any, any other extra stuff that's not just the prototype and is this game gonna be fun? Is this worth spending? the next six months or six years building. That's what you're trying to figure out, not will this run fast enough on an iPhone or something. So keep to your development environment when you're prototyping and remember that you're gonna go on to these other devices later. You have plenty of time to deal with all of that pain. Unless you're in VR, then really you have to prototype in VR, I think. All right, I saved the best and most important tip for last and that is be lazy. Don't over-engineer this stuff, don't overthink it, and don't overbuild your prototype. When you're building a prototype, the goal is to figure out 
if the thing is fun. You want to try it yourself, see if it's fun. You want to get it in front of other people and see if they think it's fun. And if you can get these ideas across and kind of portray what's unique about your game, what's going to make it interesting and what's going to make people want to play it. If you think too much about how the project is built, what the code looks like, how things are tied together, how things are going to hook up later in, in, the, in the process, in the pipeline, if you think like, hey, I want to have this NPC be able to cast 10 different abilities. Great. Don't build that. Don't don't build that at all. Maybe build the way that they can build do one hard coded ability and cast this one spell. Don't overbuild your prototype. Don't over engineer it and don't waste your time. A lot of the people and the reason that I want to talk about this and let me just wrap this up with with this little story here. I have a lot of friends who have gotten into game development and spent a lot of time over engineering little things and never finishing their games, never even getting to the point where they figured out what they wanted their game to be. They get into the habit or the the idea of just, I've got this hard technical problem. And part of this is just a computer nerd issue, right? We find these hard technical problems and we want to solve them, but they'll get in these problems of these hard technical issues and just want to solve that, not knowing whether or not it's going to be fun or they're going to actually use it. They'll spend weeks and weeks figuring out the solution to this problem and then realize later that it's not even interesting and they're just going to throw it away. They just got hyper-focused on this thing. And it's very easy to get hyper-focused on a simple little problem and try to fix it and optimize it and get it perfect. That's not the goal of prototyping. The goal of prototyping is to figure out what it is you want to build. Even That's not even the goal of building a game, right? I'll talk more about that later, about that, that whole over-focusing on little things. But... When you're building a prototype, just make sure that you are lazy about it and that you go quick. Go quick, don't expect to keep it around, expect to throw it away, only write unit tests when it's really important, when you get stuck on something, don't think that you need to do them first. Um, don't worry about cleaning up art either. I know I talked about art earlier. Pull in all the stuff that you want because you're going to delete this project. Anyway, I wanna wrap this up with just saying that building prototypes is a lot of fun. And if you think about it more like a game jam where you're just trying to get this thing out, see if it's any good and get it done quick and planning to throw it away, you'll be a whole lot more successful with it. You can get things done a lot quicker and you'll go through the process. You'll go through it a lot faster and a lot more often. You'll find better solutions and you find that Every time you do it, you'll get better at it and the results are going to come out better. So just keep building games, keep prototyping and keep throwing away those prototypes and prototype out new stuff until you find the right thing to build. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and uh, leave a comment. All right.